We put Damn. big boy ball over there, man. I was always told it's the NFC, the AFC, and the SEC. Play that big Ooh. boy ball, do what they gotta do. Man. And then the girls still ask me, what happened? How you get burnt? <laughs> man, it was a blessing to get a taste of that end zone again, man. Come on, boy, now. Come on now. I don't, I, don't take, I don't take too many L's. See, see that, that would have been my nickname. I, 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 I would have stole your nickname. <laughs> Players Club is presented by Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Washington Commanders. Welcome to the Players Club. This is your host, Santana Moss. I'm blessed to have my boy, my partner in crime, Fred Smoot. And we're fortunate to have one of our better linebackers on this Washington Commanders mm -hmm. team, Mr. Mm -hmm. Jamin Davis himself. Mm -hmm. Damon, thank you, man. Welcome. No doubt, man. Thank you for having me today. First of all, welcome, SEC brother. You know, <laughs> this guy, hey, this yeah, guy that's, played that's in the, the Big right East. His in. conference don't even exist anymore. <laughs> exactly. uh, you see how they want to bring up the Big East. All but like we the ACC now. No so, up, man. Miami ACC now. So like I say, up. welcome, SEC yes, brother. Sir, big and boy. it's rival week, right? Is exactly. this Kentucky, Tennessee rival week? Nah, not yet. They, they already done passed, actually. They played Georgia this they week. They played Georgia this week. At the end of the day, y'all got a chance of what? Come on, man. We always got a chance, dog. We play big boy ball over there, man. I was always told it's the NFC, the AFC, and the SEC. So they're going to play that big boy ball and do what they got to do, man. Hey, I like that. I, the SEC could come up here. Come on, now. Hey, the last come time on, he now. lied was the early 80s. All right? That's how I, I ain't heard man lie. No doubt. All right, man. let's get to talking some football with Jamie. Yes, so, Jamie, man, huge win Monday night, brother. Mm -hmm. Huge, huge win. First, tell me, how's the team feeling? And how was that locker room after the game, man? Oh, man, the atmosphere was crazy, it's especially getting this thing rolling now. It's just the vibe around us is just so remorseful, bro. It's just we just going out there and just trying to play our game and just keeping the family atmosphere alive. And we ju really just not worrying about the outside noise for real and just playing ball and just having fun with it. Man, how's your maturation being from, from your rookie year to now? Could you just take me into how the game has slowed down for you? Because now all I see you pulling the trigger. When you see some, you go get it. And, and yeah. what's the difference now this year and last year for you? I think it's definitely not a lot of uh, thinking twice. I mean, you yeah. just go out there, you just playing ball, and you just know what you've seen on film before and things that you've seen last year. And now it's just like – like, I've seen this before, mm -hmm. so I'm about yeah. to go out here and just play fast and try to anticipate to go out there and make whatever play I need to make. How sweet is that? I mean, that's something that's big. A lot of folks don't understand. Smooth, I'm pretty sure mm -hmm. you've been a defensive guy. Yep. Offensively, I never really kind of watched film for that mm -hmm. purpose. Right. As a defensive guy, when you're watching film, do you kind of more so watch it to say, okay, let me see some of the tendencies that I'm that might show up in the game? Yeah, some, some you tips yeah, that you know you're picking I mean? so up how on. Is, right. How sweet is that now knowing year two, I'm starting to see this more often now? Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's one of those things, like like I said before, is you, you went out there and you can anticipate what's coming because you've seen it before. Mm -hmm. So it's like once you get a chance to sit down and watch film, especially with a guy like Cole who's been in this league and been mm -hmm. doing what he do, mm -hmm. uh, you get a chance to just step back and really understand, like you got somebody that's been in your shoes and just know what to expect on this play, whether it's something that's simple as an alignment or a certain formation and you just know exactly what's coming. Now I gotta ask you this, because when I looked at your bio, I seen Hawaii, <laughs> I seen Georgia, yeah, I seen man. I seen all over the place. Yeah, and man. Hawaii has no NFL football play. <laughs> so where do you claim? Where do you say, nah, I'm a Georgia boy? Oh man, I'm, I'm a Georgia boy. That's what that yes, what I that what I had to ask. <laughs> and and how did, you know, being a military guy kind of benefit you knowing that you did move around a lot? Right. I mean, it, it definitely came with its benefits, but at the same time you do realize that you got your parents that does whatever that they need. Do whatever they, they need, need to, to do. do. Make yeah. the ultimate sacrifice and just do what they need to do to bring in food and whatever they need to do for the family. So uh, just just having my dad taking all these tours overseas, and then of course my mom as well, making whatever sacrifices that she needed to make for me and my brother and sister as well. So I gotta ask you this: today's athlete, I, all us athletes, we got that in common. Mm -hmm. But I played in a day and time where Twitter was just getting started, right, right. Instagram was in its infancy, mm -hmm. Facebook has always been there, the stiff in the room, right. but. I always used to get mad, like, let's just say Fred Smoot get beat for a touchdown. Right. I leave a FedEx field, I go home, I go to the grocery store, I got an old woman in the grocery store asking me, what happened? How you get burnt? <laughs> I, then I go home and I turn on the TV, ESPN, yeah. and I'm watching myself get burnt. Yeah, right, right. And I used to get thin-skinned with that sometimes. <laughs> Tell me, how do y'all survive in a Twitter yeah, universe yeah, yeah. where yeah. the fans are just right <sighs> under your skin instantly? <laughs> I mean, I, I think that's the crazy part about it, man. You can't really pay attention to it because yeah. at the end of the day, they don't know what it takes to get this far, and they yeah. don't know what it mm -hmm. takes to be out there and do what we do on a day-in, day-out basis. So 
I mean, at the end of the day, we just going to keep playing ball and just know what's important, and that's everybody that's in that locker room right there. Let's dive back into college, you know, yeah. um, your college years. Mm -hmm. Fred has asked you, you know, you're, you're a Georgia guy. Right, right. How did you pick up in Kentucky? Kentucky, oh, man. Like, you know, how was that? Ugh, that actually boiled back to a little bit of my dad being in the military. He used to be stationed in Fort Knox, Kentucky. Oh, all right. And uh, all right. one time we just was on the road, one time riding around, and we just so happened to go past the University of Loserville. That's what we call it, Louisville. Uh, Louisville, all right, all right. Uh, Loserville, Loserville Cardinals. Yeah. <laughs> all right, and all right. Uh, I rode past the stadium, and I was like, man, one day I'm going to end up playing in that stadium. Like, I, yeah. I, I told him that. He probably can back me on this one, too. But uh, I just seen it, and I ended up getting recruited by, by that school at first, and then – just so happened that Kentucky started sending me mail yeah, and yeah, whatnot. Yeah. I'm like, man, SEC ball would be lovely. That was always my dream. And I just started yeah. picturing myself there. I got a chance to meet Coach Stoops, and I just, once I got around the coaching staff, it just was like, it felt like home. You mm -hmm, know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I got there, and it was basically the same atmosphere here. Like, you just, everybody's just so just humble, and everybody just working for the same goal, and we just, it just was always love, so I just was like BBN for the win. Now you had an interception in college. I think it went for what seventy five yards. Yeah. Turn, you you know which one I'm yeah, talking I about. Know exactly. Like, we paint about. that picture for the people that didn't see it. <laughs> oh Tell man, me a little oh bit about man, it. we was playing Tennessee. <laughs> I hate them volunteers. I yeah. hate them hound dogs, man. Oh, man. I hate but them. But at hound. the same time, it's the best feeling in the world where you get a pick six inside of their stadium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I definitely can remember a little bit on that one. That was a whole lot dealing with film as well. So leading up to the game, it was just one of those things we just. We're trying to do as much as we can to just slow Jared Garantano down. And we mm -hmm. just was looking at how he just progressed his game throughout the years and whatnot. And uh, I remember going into it, I was like, man, I seen this look all week in practice, and I know it's coming, but I'm like, it can't be that easy. Like, but it's tight end or wide receiver? Who would receiver? receiver. receiver. All right, yeah. all right. I don't call names, yeah. but I yeah. just was like, yeah, call let him know. Who oh, no, no, no. Hey, nah, nah, I throw nah, nah. shade oh, all the time. <laughs> oh, no, nah, that ain't my game, man. I just play ball. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I just I got back in my drop and I'm already a little tired. I'm yeah. a little winded and whatnot. But I got in my drop and I seen the ball. I'm like, man, he really threw this. All right, well, I saw who Jamin Davis is. Yeah, so mm -hmm. caught the ball. And I just got rolling. I'm damn near out there jogging for real. And I'm yeah, like, man, I'm tired, but I'm about to go ahead and get this pick six and. I got there and get to the side. I'm lightheaded as I don't know what. Yeah. Man. I'm just like, and knowing you got to oh. go back out there. Yeah, <laughs> and I got to go back out there the next time. <laughs> was that drive, your first so. touchdown since your offense? Didn't you play some offense yeah, in high that was, school? That was, that was your my, first my, one that since was then? That my first one since then. So, so it felt good getting oh, back yeah, in that zone, right? It felt good, man. It was a blessing to get a taste of that end zone again, man. Yeah. So. Well, I wanted to ask you, uh, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure if that nickname came before college mm. or like during college. Shadow. Yeah. Oh, wow. How uh, First of all, tell the tell the viewers your nickname oh, and man. tell me how it came about. <laughs> the nickname is Shadow, man. That came all the way back to my childhood days. So me and one of my old best friends, we uh used to go back and forth when I used to run track. And uh basically we had a bond that was almost like brothers and they used to call him Sonic a lot. So all right. Sonic and, and Shadow. And all right, all right. Just stuck with okay. me my whole life and I don't know. I just was like, hey, that's so. That's, so that Sonic was bad. faster than you. Come on, Boy, now. come on now. I don't, I don't take, I don't take too many L's. See, see that would have been a good cornerback nickname, Shadow. Yeah, see yeah, that, see yeah. that, that would have been my nickname. I, 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 I would have stole your nickname. No doubt, no doubt. And see, I, I'm a big. Coach Gibbs was. I had the privilege to play yeah, for Coach Gibbs. Yeah. You know, Coach Gibbs is big into the the NASCAR oh, and yeah, the racing yeah, and stuff yeah, like no that. Doubt. So I didn't got a chance to go down right, to Talladega. Right. I didn't got a chance to see it. Right. I heard you a fan of cars going in a circle <laughs> at 200 miles per hour. Talk. I love to, it. How did you fall in love with NASCAR? That's crazy because like. All the way back to my childhood days, I just was hooked on racing, man. Formula One, Moto GP, NASCAR, oh, so it's all everything. Yeah. I just was hooked on it. And then NASCAR, it got to the point where I was just watching it religiously every Sunday, almost just like with football. Yeah. So uh, my little brother was a Jeff Gordon fan. My sister was into it as well with Dale okay. Jr. So I was yeah, I'm a like, Dale man. Jr. guy myself. Oh, I'm a big Dale. Jimmy Johnson yeah. fan for the, you know, for the Jimmy, Jimmy, you got Jimmy's my guy for okay. sure, for sure. Yeah, I, I got to go back down to the Daytona 500 to watch him this year. Well, this upcoming 500. So. But yeah, man, I just I got into it, and I just ever since then I always was keeping up with the racing. And just I actually got a chance to go to Monaco mm. and watch the oh, Formula right. One when they oh, shit the whole city yeah, down. Yeah. It's no experience in the world oh, like man. that. That's actually you, on my bucket list. You got you got to go check <laughs> that one. Monaco, yeah, Monaco, Monaco. Yep. Yeah, no Y'all saw the race that they had in. I don't, I don't know if it was the Grand Grand P five hundred or something in, in, like Miami. That. in Miami. Yeah. It's they, very simple. That's how I, they do I Monaco. They shit the whole city. Yeah, yeah. I was down there for it. Yeah, man. I had to go to that one. No doubt.
dog. So you met Jimmy Johnson? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How was that? Because, you know, most people say it's never fun meeting your idol. Yeah, <laughs> How was that? It was crazy. It was it was really everything I expected and more. Like, he's really a guy that's just so down to earth. You could pick up the phone and just shoot him a text and check in from oh, time to time. Up. Yeah. And it was crazy because last year was really his first full-time season in IndyCar. So, like, that was my first season in the league. And we yeah. both was, wow. like, learning something new, new just yep. getting into Still it. Still driving, but a new, another yeah, level. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so it was just crazy. So this is, this is, this is, this is new to me. So right. if you love the cars that much, what made – how how did football trump you wanting to be a? Oh man, I just I fell in love with hitting people though. Okay, <laughs> that okay. was just me. Cause I'm, yeah, because I'm wondering like yeah. for a person to be that that right. much into you know watching these cars. Because exactly. I'll tell you the truth, man, I see them damn things <laughs> going around the circle. <laughs> Ch- next, next. No doubt, man. This is how he acted no when, this how no he act when we come out of school. <laughs> he was acting like a 90 year old man oh, when man. we were when we hey, were seniors in college. Fred, he was acting the same way. Fred said I had an old soul from the day we met, man. But I'm just being real with you. Right. I don't see what's going on, but like. Oh, man, I say, it's, it's way more into it than just yeah. going into a circle. That's all I can I tell you. Yeah, yeah, because it's the time and it's the yeah, maintenance. It's, it's, it's learning everything. how to follow people, win drag. Right, right, it's, and, and, and the hardest thing is staying off of that wall, right? <laughs> exactly. Have you ever talked to him about oh, just man. hitting that wall? It's crazy. I could just imagine what it's like when they're taking the different impacts from crashing and whatnot. It's just I, I know it's way more that goes into it than people might think. So you meeting Jimmy? Circle. Jimmy, did y'all ever share any? Um, I mean, because I'm pretty sure him. T- I, I'm, I'm sure he had asked you some, some questions about being a linebacker. Yeah. Football. We, you know, being a football player, we in a car crash almost right. every, every single play. That's, that's what right, hitting right, people. Right. But they are they are literally in, in car, car crash. crash. Yeah, and even literally. when they don't get in a crash, literally. just going around that damn right. thing a right. hundred times is almost your body takes a t- you know it takes right. a toll on your body. Right. Have y'all discussed you know what that feeling is like? Oh yeah, I mean last year when around the time when I came out for the draft, I got a chance to go up and watch him at the Detroit Grand Prix, <laughs> and I actually got a chance to just spend the whole day with him as well. We were just talking about a little bit of everything. And it was just crazy, like, just giving him my experiences when it came to football and him talking about racing and just the minor details that goes into something as simple as changing the tire. Tire, or yeah. Like and I'm just like, wow, like, it's, it's way more than people might imagine it to be. So it's just, it's real humble to get a chance to meet your idol, let alone become yeah. friends with him. That's so. dope, man. Well, I got to do the pit. I got to do right. the pit stuff with right. Coach Gibbs, and oh, you're yeah. right. It's right. a team, like, they look, it's a total yeah. team thing. One person off one second, put them right. a second behind. It's a very serious exactly. sport. Yeah, I remember exactly. Gibbs, he invited a lot of us to come out whenever oh, we Oh, I, I always go. Run. I always go down. You know, I'm that I'm that one, like, all right, Coach. Oh, no, 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 he don't want to do nothing. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> That's him right there. I appreciate there. it because oh, I'd be home in Miami. <laughs> but, but, see, Santana was always the one. They'll be like, you know what? Hey, guys, make sure y'all wear y'all suit. We going on the road. Santana come looking just like this. <laughs> like like, just hey, like, like me, nothing. I'll be like, Tanner, you know we finna go right here, baby. I'm ready. Yeah, like, listen to me. me. man. Oh, oh, you the guy. I'm finna I'm ask you who is the guy on the team. Oh, like, man, that's me. You see, you see I'm, rock, <laughs> I'm, I'm with the flip-flops Bro. right now, man. I'm from South Georgia. I, I, literally, I literally got out of my bed every morning. And you know those Uggs, those yeah, Uggs, yeah, 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 I would yeah, have yeah. ones that I could wear in the house exactly. and ones I could wear to practice. Yep. So I would wear them things I'm telling you. just so I could slide in them and yep. slide out. I have 4 X uh, <laughs> Jordan sh- jersey shorts on. Oh, yeah, easy. Exactly. With a, with a exactly. 4X shirt on yep. and have a thermo on with a jacket, and I'm, I'm coming to work. That you know was me. Sometimes I'd be getting tempted to just throw on some shorts and some flip-flops yeah, and call man. a day if it wasn't Look, too I'm cold. Look, I'm coming out my house into a building. Yeah. And when I leave, I'm going back into the house. Exactly. So, you know, exactly. I ain't got to get dressed for nobody, Exactly. I ain't outside doing nothing not chill with 90 year old men. <laughs> <laughs> all right, don't do that at home. All right, that, that's all I'm saying. Still to come on the Players Club. But I'm not trying to be anybody that I'm not and just playing Damon Davis football at the end of the day. Honestly, say the defense has been playing lights like out. Playing lights out. Yeah. Looking in the mirror, I would say myself. <laughs> <laughs> you, did you and your dad ever play, get to play a turkey bowl against each other? Welcome to the Fight Club where everybody show me love. Yeah, yeah, show me love. Yeah, yeah. Hands off Gibson, off the edge of two. They're marking it at the one. Pull the field to the back of the end zone. Antonio Gibson, toe tap. Four, near sideline, it's caught. Touchdown! Touchdown, Washington! Time for the player profile, presented by Pepsi, the official soft drink of the Washington Commanders. So, oh, so tell man. me this though, man. So, um, I, you know, we're talking about this season, and um, right now we're sitting at five and five. But I can honestly say the defense has been playing for the last seven, six to seven weeks, man. You lights guys have been out. playing lights out. Yeah. Um, what was it that? 
because I kind of asked this same thing to uh, Jay Allen uh, last week. What was it to you that that switch cut on for you guys, you know, together, collectively? Honestly, training camp. I mean, we just knew that regardless of what anybody had to say about us coming in and, and throughout the season, we wasn't really worried about anything that was going on around us. And even as a team, like, yeah. we just knew that it was a standard that we had set for ourselves, and we just wanted to go out there and make sure we had a team of guys that's just going out there, all 11 hats to the ball, flying around, making plays, and – now we're trying to get us some turnovers rolling, mm -hmm. just doing whatever we can, man, mm -hmm. just to play fast and just do whatever we need to do to get off on third down. And did y'all do anything extra with the turnovers? Because for a long time it was a drought yeah. with the turnovers. Drop, so right. was it some extra you did? Because I know us as a group, we would stay out there, we would do ball drills, we would, you know, do the drills where we're ripping it out. We like yeah. just try to just try to manifest them. I mean, yeah. we were just we was just being ourselves, honestly. We didn't really yeah. do nothing too crazy or special or try to go out there and be Superman. We yeah. just yeah. knew yeah, yeah, it was coming. Ball. Yeah, yeah, we just yeah. knew it was coming. And they come, yeah, they, they come in bunches. Yeah, they come in bunches. They come in bunches. They take one to get the party started. That's what they always say to us, man. And it's just we go out there day in, day out, just keep playing ball. And eventually right, they you come. got up for this game. We know how how far emotionally, mentally, you got up for the Philadelphia game. Right. Now we got the Texans. How do you stay focused? How do you don't overlook the Texans? Uh -huh. How do you understand that we got to come with the same right. amount of focus? We did. How do you wipe that victory? Because it's hard sometimes to put yeah. some of these good victories and just push them to the side out the right. way. Right. How do you push it out the way and focus? You you can't overlook anybody in this league yeah. at, at all. So I mean I mean. Week in and week out, we just go in and just prepare the same way we need to to get ready to go out there and get us a dub at the end of the day. Like, you don't go out there thinking, oh, we're getting ready for the Eagles this week, and then we got to think about it next week. We got the Bills or whoever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you just you go out and you focus on whoever's right there in front of you, and we just keep it rolling. All right, I want to ask you, um, how different is it now that you don't have Cole out there? Like, are you more the vocal guy out there now that's calling things, or, or is it something that – that Cole used to do when you was on the field with him that now you have to make sure that you mindful of? I mean, as, as crazy as it sounds, even though he's not out there, he's still watching film, mm. he's still in the meetings with me, we still doing everything the same way we've been doing it. So it's just a matter of you going out there and like I said before, not trying to be nobody other than yourself. So yeah. I'm just going out there and yeah, of course, trying to be a little bit more vocal and making the fronts and the calls and whatnot that I need to, but I'm not trying to be anybody that I'm not and just playing Jamin Davis football at the end of the day. So. Is it, is it true that your father also played football too? Yeah, he played for a little bit. What, okay. Did he play college? Yeah, he played at Bethune Cookman. Bethune oh, Cookman. Yeah, all right, all right. Yeah. Did he play linebacker? Nah. What position? DN. 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 Okay. Yeah. So you knew you were going to end up on defense. Oh, yeah. Definitely, one, definitely. Some form of fashion. Even though, even though I had a thing for trying to score some touchdowns, man, I definitely knew I had a, a, a true love for hitting people. For now sure. I got to ask you this one Thanksgiving coming up. Mm -hmm. You know what it is. My, yes. my favorite, yes, favorite yes, of all time. Yes, sir. Did you did you and your dad ever play get to play a turkey bowl against each other? Cause nah, I nah. got a chance to play turkey bowl against my dad and nah. I broke his leg. No nah, <laughs> man. So nah, that's the story. How, I you how you broke his leg though, man? All right, check this out. I was like tenth grade in high school. Yeah. And they were like, yeah, we got we got turkey bowl. Because me and my dudes in my neighborhood, we played the turkey bowl every, every Thanksgiving. Yeah, 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 and yeah, my yeah. dad, which is a preacher, mm -hmm. old preacher man come down, like, I'm going to play with y'all this week. <laughs> and I was like, yeah, I remember he ain't get me that radio I wanted for, <laughs> <laughs> for Christmas. Oh, and my dad was going for a pass, and I cut him low. Right, right. And I thought he was playing. Because wow. he was like, yeah. Like, I can't get up. And I was like, man, get on up. <laughs> and I broke my daddy's leg. We had to rush him to the hospital. Oh, so man. turkey leg wasn't the only thing no. I that, that, that Thanksgiving. Well, I learned two things from you just now. So, <laughs> so, so one, I see you don't care nothing about your elders. Oh, man. And two, now I know why you got the mouth of the south. You, you a preacher, son. I'm a preacher, son. Oh, man. That's crazy. No well, look, man, Jamin, and man, it's been a great sit down, man. We appreciate you. One of the things we do on the Players Club, we have this ball that everybody that's, that's great us on this show have to mm -hmm. sign this ball for mm -hmm. us. Oh, yeah, no Can doubt. Can we uh, no have the pleasure to have your signature on? Yes, sir. You know it, man. But I want to say again, man, thank you for blessing us on the show, man. No doubt. We appreciate you. Good luck this week. And yes, that's the wrap from the Players Club. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Still to come on the Players Club. Now, you know for speed now. You know for speed. Yeah. Four, three, four, two guy coming out of college. Yeah. Did D. Green just go back in time? That's how fast I thought the man had ran. I thought he had went back in time. Be sure to listen to the extended version of the Players Club podcast wherever you get your podcast. Plus, you can watch on the Washington Commanders YouTube and Commanders.com. Welcome to the Fight Club where everybody show me love. Yeah, yeah, show me love. Yeah, yeah, show me love. Handoff Gibson off the edge. Yes, sir. Gibson is going to throw it. 
they're marking it at the one. Pull the wheel to the back of the end zone. Antonio gets in. Toe tap. Four. Near sideline. It's caught. Touchdown. Touchdown, Washington. Welcome back to the Players Club. I'm Santana Moss. I'm joined today by my classmate <laughs> and former teammate, mm-hmm. Mr. Mouth of the South, Fred Smooth. What's up, brother? Oh, man, you don't you the man. <laughs> we gonna have a, we got a good show today, man. Um, we're gonna play a game. All right, I love games. It's gonna be name that teammate. Oh, okay. You know, I'm gonna name something and then you're gonna have to say who fits that description, vice versa. All right. All right, all right, let's all right, get going. So I'm gonna start us off. Yep. The funniest teammate you ever had? Looking in the mirror, I would say myself. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Reagan Upshaw. Reagan Do you Upshaw. remember Reagan Upshaw? I know of Reagan Upshaw. I didn't Defensive play with him, lineman. He had the gold tooth right there. Oh. When I say I would, anytime he was around, my stomach was hurting. Even in the game, he would like kind of crack jokes and stuff like that. I, I, I love Reagan. Great guy. See, I would have said you because, but I wouldn't ask that question. So. Yeah. You know, go ahead. Oh, I understand, I understand. My <laughs> question for you, which teammate you have now? You got to dig deep for this one. Yeah. Gave you the best pregame speeches. Yeah, I mean, uh, it, that's a hard one. Um, but I think I had to give the nod to Curtis Martin when I was in New York. All right, all Curtis right. Curtis Martin. I mean, and if you just looked at Curtis Martin, you would never thought the things that he would say pregame would get you amped for a game. He just yeah. seemed like a... Real cool, quiet, laid dude. back yeah. dude. Uh, folks used to get on him and say, if you ever walked in his house, he would, he had Maxwell playing, and, and he almost floated in the room like he was Prince <laughs> at times. So you would never imagine him yeah. giving you a good Being intense. pep talk. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. So, but it was just phenomenal every time. man. I mean, I was ready to go out there and run through a wall, you name it, whatever it was. You know, Curtis got it out of me. So he, I say Jeff guy. George. Jeff and George. everybody hate the general. Listen, <laughs> Jeff George made it plain and simple. Let's go earn this check, baby. <laughs> that, that's it. Jeff George ain't said nothing else. Oh, uh, okay. My next one for you. Yeah. The most competitive teammate. Oh, you already know. Sean, Sean Taylor. Hey, right, listen. T. Coach Gill be like, this is a walkthrough. Sean be like, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right, listen, you know, because you've seen it firsthand. You got me on mine yeah, one time. Yeah, hey, so hey, listen. I know. Ain't no such thing as walkthrough. Yeah. Uh, Teammate or no teammate, we get in between these lines. Whether he in flats or or, or flip flops, he hey, running around. It doesn't matter. And I remember one time he came out here. He came out to practice and he had blue jeans under his pants. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and he just started running through people. I like, what's wrong with you, dude? They got the ball, don't they? All right, they got the ball. I'm gonna get it out their hand. Yeah. So you most definitely, that's my most yeah, competitive. That's, that's not. Now you know him for speed. Now you know him for speed. Yeah. Four three, four two guy coming out of college. Yeah. Who's the fastest guy you ever played for? Played uh, with on the team? Man, okay. So fastest teammate. It seemed like a lot of this stuff go back to uh, NY days. Um, my man Jay Gutter, Jonathan Carter, came out of our class. I remember, yeah. He yeah. went to the Giants. He got drafted. I don't know if it was a late round or a free agent deal to the Giants. Yeah. He spent one year with the Giants and came over to me, came over to us with the Jets. And I remember he was a tween. He played at Troy. Yeah. And they didn't know what to use him, man. He was tall as all outdoors, but he played running back slash receiver. And I told Coach, let me have him. We went home. Before I took him to Miami, I knew he was fast. Did I knew you he feel was, like he was faster than you? Way faster. Way Wait, faster. Hold up. It ain't, you can't get way faster than way you, faster. brother. Bro, like, I had gears. This dude has had, like, it seemed like his gears never stopped. Yeah. I thought when he got to a certain, certain, certain gear, it was over. I don't saw him turn on again. The only thing I can say that was different from me with people, I was explosive with my speed. Yeah. Wait, my, no, no, my you, speed was like a ball. You, you just, had speed and quickness. Yeah. Usually, a fast yeah. guy is just fast and they Bingo. can't stop. So he was yeah. a guy that just ran. You yeah, know what I mean, he yeah. wasn't a guy that within five and ten yards that can build that up. Yeah, it yeah. took over time. Yeah, but you know, if, if we had to get on the track, yeah. He would dominate me in the 200. He would yeah. dominate me in a quarter. The 100, I'd probably get yeah. with him. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Because that's right now. Yeah. But uh, no, he was, he was, he, he had them gears on him. I, at my time, when we first got here, we used to still have the fastest red skin contest. Right? I remember D Green was one of the guys that yeah, was always. And, and, and the last three was me, Champ, and D Green. D Green. And we I ran. About Champ too. And, and we ran. And I said, did D. Green just go back in time? That's how fast I thought the man had ran. I thought he had went back in time, and he just smoked us. And you know what? I went home. I was depressed for like three days because oh, I called man. my mama. Like, I just 
I just got beat by a 40-year-old. 40 years old. I, 40 years old. Yeah, 40 years. But then he went to the Pro Bowl that year yeah, and, then and beat the whole damn yeah. NFL. And I yeah. was like, I don't even feel bad anymore. The timeless one has yeah. done it again. Yeah. No, nah, D. Green was that dude. Yeah. All right, this is my other one for you. Right. Um, okay. The best wide receiver to go against in practice. Ooh. Now, you had some guys now. I've been saying I had some guys, man. I got to exclude you, right? I got to exclude I don't you. Know. I I I right, best receivers, of course. I say you, well, double Moss. All right, I would go Santana Moss and Randy oh, Moss. You did, you did, you <laughs> so, did get a chance. But y'all was so different. Yeah. You got both of y'all very fast. Like you said, one got a more longer stride, yeah. but one just wasn't run route. Yeah. Randy run go route yeah. after go route after go route. It was more, I would say, harder to kind of keep up with you sometime because I was a taller corner. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to get me, it's coming out of my breaks. Out, but yeah. if you give me time to, to come catch you, I'm going to come catch you. But I would most say – I'm double mossed on that situation okay, right that's there. That's a good one. Well, Fred, man, you know, that it was good with you joining me today, man. Um, that's it from, you know, the Players Club. See you next time. <laughs>